Maybe I can help you. I've been here a long time. He's an old guy. His name's P. Jensen. Well, do you know him? What do you want with him? Your friend or something? His nephew. Well, take care, Ida. See you next trip. Uh, sure, and don't forget the magazines, huh? Sure. What's the matter with him? Wondering what I'm going to tell you. How in the world did a nice-looking young fellow like yourself come to be a nephew of a crazy old coot like Pete Jensen? Well, the guy can't pick his uncles. Are you going to tell me? You're Pete Jensen's nephew? That's right. Why is it a crime? Let's go on over to the office. We can talk better there. Talk about what? In the office, huh? Anything you say. Sit down. Just when you think it can't get any hotter, fusion does. Yeah, it's hot, all right. But you didn't bring me here to talk about the weather, Sheriff. What am I here for? Well, I don't know how to tell you. It isn't too pleasant. Your uncle's dead. Well, that's why I'm here. I was his only living relative. I figured I'd better come by. How'd you know he was dead? He only died four days ago. Well, I didn't. You see, he wrote me a letter a short while back asking me to get over as quick as I could. He said he wasn't feeling well. well. Your uncle didn't die from natural causes. In fact, he may have been murdered. I'm not sure. Murdered? Yeah. They found him in his shack in a pool of blood. It could have been his and might not. We're not sure of that either. How do you mean? Well, the only mark on his body was a small cut on his left wrist. And we also found a goat in the shack with its throat cut. Now, the blood may have been the animals. I've sent a sample down to Albuquerque to let the lab men decide. I'm waiting for an answer. It sure was peculiar. Yeah. I'm sorry, but your uncle wasn't liked in this town. He had many enemies. It's too bad I've got to break the news to you like this. Yeah, it looked like he saw something horrible. Was there anything missing when you found him? We don't know that. As I say, he wasn't liked. And nobody had been around there in months. He didn't have anything that anyone knew of. Except these. Here's most of his things. I put them in this carton to make them easier to handle. Uh, thanks. Sure he's a scorcher. Hi, Doc. This is Dr. Lucas. I didn't get your name. Oh, Nick Richards. Hello, doctor. Hi, Nick. Fine. This is Pete Jensen's nephew, doc. Mm hmm Pete's me, why anyone want to keep an old goat skin like that? Can't help wondering what they want with it. Yeah, it is kind of peculiar. No accounting for people's tastes, I guess. I'm gonna go up and take a look at the house. Shack's more like it. A dirty one at that. Your uncle was quite a character. Yeah. The shack, then. Who knows, my uncle may have left me a fortune and never said anything about it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sheriff. Oh, by the way, there's one more thing. I hate to mention it, but your uncle not having any money left some of the folks holding the bag. There wasn't anything left to pay funeral expenses with. How much was it? Would say forty dollars would cover it nicely. I'll take care of it as soon as I'm settled. Okay? That's fine. Tell you what, I'll give you a lift over there. It's only a few blocks, but in this heat, it'll seem like a mile. It's all right, sheriff. I'll be okay. A likable sword, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's not much like his uncle. What do you suppose ever happened to old Pete the last few months? Oh, it beats me. He seemed to get worse with time. Where do you suppose this nephew has come from? He doesn't seem to bother him. What makes you say that? Did you notice? He didn't have a drop of perspiration on him. Must be a hundred degrees outside. Oh, well, you got the pinochle egg? Got it, Doc.
Well, has the cat got your tongue? I'm now Lucas. I might ask who you are. I'm Nick Richards, Pete Jensen's nephew. And this is my property you're on. Well, I never knew Pete Jensen had a nephew. He never mentioned it to me. Uh, we used to buy his goat milk. Put it down. My father uses it for TB patients. Oh, you, you're the doctor's daughter. That's right. When Pete died, I, I didn't know he had any relatives, so I continued coming over here for the goat milk. I didn't know it would upset anybody. I'm, I'm sorry. You, you kind of startled well, me. Well, forget it. No, wait. I am sorry, honest. That's all right. You don't have to apologize. After all, it is your property. I, I didn't mean that exactly. It's just that, you know, it's been kind of a difficult day for me. And ever since the sheriff told me that my uncle may have died from something other than a natural cause, I... Will you forgive me? I'm sorry. I, I wasn't very polite either. Shake. It's a deal. As for the goat, you can come over any time, if you do the milking. Okay. My hand. What's the matter? Just kind of, kind of dizzy. Am I right now? You better see a good doctor. Is your father a good doctor? One of the best in town. That's what I thought. How many are there in town? Just dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for the milk. Good okay. Hi. Oh, hi, honey. Be with you in a minute. Well, she took uh, six and a half gallons, George, so that's 2.30. Go, George. Thanks a lot. See you later. Is the tire ready? Hmm? Is the tire ready? No, well, it's uh, one o'clock, isn't it? <laughs> then it's ready. Now, look here, young lady. Do you think this large and prosperous organization will go back on its word to one of its uh, <laughs> best customers? Uh... <laughs> Allow me. Is. Good as new. I think I'll have the owner notified and you shall be given a raise. Well, thank you, ma'am. Say, would you, uh, would you like to meet him tonight? Huh? Oh, I don't know. My time is pretty much filled, you know. Oh. Fresh. <laughs> Tell me you need some more milk already. No, I haven't delivered it yet. I'm on my way now. I thought if you weren't busy, you might like to come over and see how much good the milk is doing. Where would that be? Over at Harry Matthews' house. Well, of course, if you're busy. I... No, no, I'd like that. Hello, 
Nell, so you drive up. Come on in. Oh, got yourself a helper? Oh, Harry, this is Pete Jensen's nephew, Nick Richard. Nice to know you, son. How are you, sir? Sorry about Pete. I didn't get on too well with him. We had our differences. But I sure was sorry that it happened the way it did. Yeah, some people seem to think he didn't die a natural death. Well, the way I heard tell, he was found inside his shack, dead. But that's the sheriff's job. Harry, I wanted Nick to see how much good the milk was doing. Well, actually, not much anyone can do for lung trouble. But it does help a lot. And I sure do want to thank you, Mr. Richards. Well, you're certainly welcome, sir. I'll wait for you in the car now. I'll see you later, sir. Come on by, son. Anytime. I will. Real nice young fella. Pity his uncle didn't have some of these qualities. Yeah. Pete was always more than nice to me. I think that's understandable, even in Pete's case. Oh, I'd better be going, Harry. Well, thanks again for bringing the milk. You've gone to a lot of trouble for me. And someday I hope I can repay you. And say hello to your dad and give him my best. How has he been? Oh, he never stops. But I'll say hello for you. Goodbye, Nell. said she was here and that the time was about 1.30, right? She swears that he looked perfectly all right when she and Nick left. I don't understand it. I gave him regular checkups. Never any indication of any kind of a weak heart condition. Well, couldn't he have choked as he drank the milk and caught his breath, maybe, and then coughing had a heart attack? I mean, isn't that possible? It's possible. As I told you before, Harry Matthews had as sound a heart as you or me. No, we'll have to come up with something more professional than that. See, a man just doesn't have a heart attack without some apparent reason. Hello. Yes, Joe. I just got a report from Albuquerque. Read it to me. Thanks. That's the lab report from Albuquerque. You were right. It was goat's blood on Pete's hands. Still doesn't explain why he died. Unless it was a coronary thrombosis. A what? Heart attack. Well, I'll be in my office. If you need me, call me. Thanks, Doc. Boy. Hey. Richards, 
Bradford. Brands, it's me! Brands! Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's wrong? You sound terrible. Prince, my dog, attacked me. Did he go mad? I don't, I don't know. I... David. David, you wait right there. I'm coming over. David. Stay here and keep him quiet. I don't want him moving around at all. Okay, Dad. He's going to be all right now, dear. I don't know, David. It's up to you. Dad thinks that under the circumstances, you would be making a wise move. All right. Suppose I do hire someone to run the station. What am I going to do? Get well. It's going to be tough. Come on, you're a tough guy. What'd you tell this guy, Nick? Just that you wanted to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Come in. Hi. Hello, Nick. You must be David. Nick Richards. I want to thank you for offering to help me out. Well, I don't know about that. I kind of figure you're helping me out, too. So it works out for the both of us. Want me to show you around? Well, you don't have to. I've done this kind of work before. And in this kind of heat, too. Then it's all settled. Sure. If you like, why don't you give me the keys to the cash box now? I'll go down and open the station for you. All right. Keys are there on the table. Not so long. Goodbye and thank you, Nick. Feel better now? Yeah, I really do. So it was nice of him to help me out this way. Yeah, I don't understand when he said you were helping him. What do you mean? He doesn't need the money. Oh? How do you know that? Well, I heard Dad on the phone today. He was talking to Mr. Carter, the bank manager, and he told Dad that Nick deposited two thousand dollars this morning. You know, David. I think Nick's trying to be a real good friend to you. Yeah, I think you're right, honey. I guess he came along just at the right time. Ain't nothing free in here, paper, so turn around and get out. How much do I owe you? Two dollars. Thanks, paper. For real. 
Sure they're real. You think they're counterfeit or something? This calls for a celebration. Where'd you get this money? From a friend. As a matter of fact, from a very good friend. Where would you get a friend? A uh, new fellow at the gas station. What's his name? How should I know? I just met him. Now look, little man, just because I felt sorry for you, when you get two bucks out of the kindness of my heart, don't mean I want to get in any trouble getting it back, understand? Personally, I don't know why I ever came in here. You paid me the two dollars you owed me. Well, that's right. A gentleman never forgets a debt, especially to a lady. Don't come with that high and mighty talk to me. <laughs> you ain't no gentleman. <laughs> and I ain't no lady, that's for sure. <laughs> And to think that I once liked fat people. Why, you? Fat and skinny had a race. Fat fell down and broke her face. Hey, you get out of my place and stay out. Come on in. Hey, why so glum? You ought to be happy. The money keeps rolling in the way it has. You and David will be able to get married and retire soon. Nick, I'm worried about David. Worried about David? Why? He just isn't himself these days. Well, he took it pretty hard. There was a nasty maul in his dog gave him. No, it isn't that. Something seems to be changing him. He doesn't seem to care anymore. Care about what? About me. Every time I go to the house, he's always busy with something. Too busy to see his future wife. Well, maybe he's worried about his scars. The bandages are coming off in a couple of days. I know if I were in his shoes, I'd be worried. I mean, worried that my girls still wanted to marry me. Scars or no scars. Hey, that's just it. I've told him about this. I told him I don't care what he looks like. I just care about what he is. Well, to have a girl that feels that way can cure things a lot worse than scars. You, um, you want a Coke? I'll buy. Sure. I just put him in the box a few minutes ago. Nick, here I am telling you all about my troubles and not even asking you if you mind. I'm listening, and I don't mind. Anyway, that's what friends are for. Have you ever heard of Dr. Robert Marks? Marks? No, why? Well, he's one of the best plastic surgeons in the world. He, he and Dad were interns together. Well, when this thing happened to David, Dad asked if he'd help, and he said he would. That's wonderful. And I'm sure with a guy like Dr. Marks, David hadn't got a thing to worry about. He doesn't. No, but he still thinks that everybody's against him, including me. Now, you, um, you want some real good advice? I certainly need it. Give David a little time. Believe me, he'll come around. Nick, I don't know how David and I are ever going to be able to repay you. Baloney. Come on. By the way, what time is this Dr. Marks coming in? He'll be leaving Albuquerque tonight. That's good. I'll see you later. Huh? Hey. 
How's it going? What's the matter? You need some more money? Oh, you already gave me five. I still got some left. <laughs> See, I don't need no money. You uh, want to do me a favor? For a friend, I'd do anything. To me, you're a real friend. Well, you see, this buddy of mine's in a little trouble, and I'd like to help him out. Only I, I can't do it myself. You just name it. You meet me here tomorrow night. And this is between you and me. You understand? You understand? Here tomorrow night. It's between you and me. Right. So then what happened? Well, this is the strangest part of the whole thing. To reach the highway, that steer had to drift four or five miles away from the main herd. Then it lays itself right down in the middle of the highway, right smack in front of the doctor's car. I don't get it. She was a tough break for Dave. Doesn't make sense, a hunk of beef killing a man like Dr. Mark. Was he alive when you got there? Yeah, at least it was over quick. Yeah, you're right. I don't know how you do it, son. What? Well, here it is, over a hundred, and you're just as fresh as if you just stepped out of a freezer. What's your secret? You promise not to tell anyone? Sure. Well, I'm really the devil. It got kind of hot down there, so I came up here to cool off. Sort of a, a summer vacation. <laughs> Wait a minute. Howdy, Tom. Hi, Nell. Dave. He was a real nice guy. She was sorry to hear about that surgeon getting killed last night. Well, Tom told me. But there are other surgeons. Forget it. If you want, Dave, you can take the cash and receipts with you now. We'll save you a trip coming by in the morning. If I need any advice for my help, I'll ask for it. Suit yourself. I was only trying to help. I'd like to go now. That is, if you don't mind. I'll see you in the morning, then. So long, Nick. Thank you. David. David, what is it? You're acting as if you hate everybody, including me. You don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing wrong. There must be. You're acting so cold and so hard. Can't you see? Yes, I can see. I can see David Simpson. The David that made me the happiest girl in the world when he asked me to marry him. David, I don't care what you think you're going to look like. I only care about what I know you to be. The sweetest, gentlest man this side of heaven. That's what I can see. Only what's come over you? But we were going to get married. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Well, don't you think it entitles me to an explanation? Or are you really starting to hate me, too? Answer me, David! David, I... I know how you must feel about Prince turning against you. Look. Look, have you ever thought how I might look once these bandages are removed? You must have. Why else would you have your father bring in a plastic surgeon to operate? To make me look normal again? Isn't that it? I don't understand why you're talking to me like this, David. I'm not going to even try. Everybody has tried to help you, David. Nick has... Oh, so it's Nick now, is it? He doesn't need a plastic surgeon. Well, I can see he's becoming quite a hero with you.
David, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, David. I... Papers understand. I won't say a word to anyone. I ain't stupid. Now, will you give me the money so I can get a little drink? It's awful hot, and gee whiz, money sure don't last long. Okay, here. Now, get out of here. And be at my place at 10 o'clock, you understand? Your place at 10. I ain't stupid. I'll be there. What's the matter? Come inside. What's the matter? Sit over here. Tell me, what's a pretty little girl like you doing with tears in her eyes? It's David. He... I slapped him. He... Oh, Nick, I don't know what to do. He doesn't even know that I'm alive anymore. Are you still in love with him? Yes. That is, I... I love the David I knew. But now... Oh, Nick, I just don't know anymore. Well, sometimes we think we know someone and then there's a little pressure. It might turn out completely different than we thought. Oh, but D David was so kind and gentle. He, he wouldn't have been rude to a living soul. Then why did you slap him? I don't know exactly. I think it was because he suggested there was something between you and me. Oh, that's crazy. Well, he didn't come right out and say it. Oh, Nick, he's so strange. I don't understand how things can go so wrong. Maybe they're not wrong. Maybe this is the way it was meant to be. What are you doing here, Papers? I wasn't doing nothing on a sheriff. I, I was only trying to find something to read. You'd better go on home now. It's past 10 o'clock. Past 10 o'clock? Yes, it's almost 10.30. Now, do as I tell you and go on home before you spend the night with me. Okay, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank <laughs> oh, it's you. You 
you're late. I didn't think you were coming. I'm sorry. I was busy and I forgot what time it was. And then the sheriff told me. The sheriff? I thought I told you to make sure no one saw you coming. But I couldn't help it, Mr. Richard, sir. Honest. Well, it doesn't matter. Come inside. Sit down over here. Is that a goat? Yes, Mavis. It's a goat. For a minute there, I thought I was having the DTs. Now sit here. Here. Take some of this. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to harm you. Do you remember what I told you this afternoon at the station? You told me you wanted me to help you do something. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. No, no wait.
matter? You look funny. Is that a man down there by the bush? Daddy! Daddy! There's the body down there. I'm Sheriff Fuller, and that's Dr. Lucas. Boy, are we glad to see you. John Winter's the name, and this is my wife, Martha. Is he dead, Doc? Been dead about six hours. Looks like a horse trampled him. All right, let's go over that again, what you told the driver to tell me. Well, the car got overheated, so I pulled over to the side, let the kids get out of the car to stretch their legs a bit. We'd been on the road a pretty long time. Just about that time, Vera Jean started yelling. Then they both got all excited, screaming they'd found a dead man. I didn't believe them. You know how kids are, Sheriff. Always imagining things. But they kicked up such a fuss. Finally, when I went over to this place where... And there he was. I've never seen such a mess. So then you flagged down the car and called me. Well, I guess that about does it. Certainly appreciate your cooperation. I'll have a look. Thanks again. Don't you want a statement? No, I think I have all the information I need. Thanks anyhow. Looks like you tried to write something. P E T E Pete is R-I-C-H. Rich. Pete is rich. Pete? Pete who? Only Pete I know is Pete Jensen. Yeah, you're right. We better get back into town. That can't be. Pete Jensen's dead. You know, Doc, this don't look so good. Pete is rich. I think I can straighten you out on that. Papers knew Pete better than anyone. So? Most everybody thought Pete didn't have a dime to his name, right? So you think that that's what Papers was trying to tell us, that Pete was rich, huh? It's a theory I'm going on. Now, we both know that Nick, Pete's nephew, came to town without much money. He didn't have enough to pay you for Pete's funeral. I happen to know a few days ago he deposited $2,000. Maybe that's what paper's trying to tell us. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, it does. But why did he do it? You know, write that Peter's Rich thing in the sand. Yeah. And where did that horse come from? The nearest ranch is miles from here. Now, Doc, there's something strange about this. Now, do me a favor, will you? Sure, Tom. What? When we get back into town, if anyone asks you what happened to papers, uh, go along with me and just say that it looked like a car hit him, huh? Hit by a car? Why? Well, let's just say I've got me a hunch. A hunch that there's a lot more to this than you and I can see. Maybe Pete ain't dead. <laughs> Tom, you and I both saw Pete buried. I did sign the certificate. You was there when I signed it, remember? I know, Doc. I know Pete's dead. But I also know that papers is dead, too. All right, Tom. I'll go along with you. I'll say he was hit by a car. I'll get that blanket. Stop it, Lenny.
Like you uncovered something. Dad. Dad. You will talk to him, won't you? Well, I'll do the best I can. But are you sure there isn't anything between you and this Nick fellow? Oh, of course I'm sure. David's imagining things. Well, like I said, I'll do everything I can. But I'm not doing it because you asked me to. I'm doing it because I, I think David would make a fine son-in-law. Oh. Thanks, Dad. I'll see you later. Pretty tight. Mm. Well, Doc, how does it look? Oh, I've seen worse. Well, let's face it, Doc. Uh... Another very pretty sight of well, You're going to need some work. It's amazing the things they do these days with plastic surgery. What about Nell and me? Have we got a chance? Well, that's up to you, Dave. I will tell you one thing. Nell loves you very much. You're not helping matters by not talking with her or concerning your future together. Doc, look at me. Look at me and tell me honestly what you see. You know what I see, David. There's your answer. Like I said, you're, you're going to need some work, plastic surgery. But with it, I'm sure your problem's only a matter of a few months at most. No doubt. No, I love now too much to hold her to any obligation I might have put under before this happened, so... Maybe you better tell her to forget me. Oh, you're exaggerating, son. Other people have had accidents worse than yours. They managed. Sorry, Doc, I've made up my mind. Why don't you let your friends help you, David? There's a Mr. Johnson here that wants to charge some gas till the end of the month. Yeah, I just wanted to call, make sure it was all right. Well, bye now. So long. Ah, 
on, Lanny. I don't know what's gotten into him. Yeah, and dogs can sure smell things they don't like. Away. I was feeding a stray cat in the back of one. I guess he's sensitive. I'd like to ask you something. Sure, anything. Depends in time. If I hadn't, I'd have been where Papers is now. You're right. It was a nasty way to go. Yeah. Who told you it was a horse? The doc? Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Nick. It's okay. Well, then if you didn't tell him who did, you and I were the only ones that knew. Well, I don't know, unless it could have been those people that found Paper's body. Maybe they stopped at the station for gas. Look, I asked him who told him, and he said it was you. Now, why would he lie? I don't know. I went over to see Nick this morning. I figured he might be able to straighten out this business about old Pete Jensen being rich. You know, that's what Papers wrote, or at least part of what he wrote. Well, Nick wasn't home, so I took the liberty of going through the place. It's against the law, you know, Tom. I know that, but I didn't figure an innocent man had mind. Anyhow, all I found were a couple of goatskins and a square painted on the floor under a rug, like it was meant to be hidden. What kind of a square? Well, not exactly a square. It had six sides. Hexagon. Yeah, that's it. And there was some blood on the floor. I think it was goat's blood. What do you think it was goat's blood? Well, there was a goatskin hanging on a clothesline inside the shack. And Laddie dug up a carcass outside. Hadn't been buried too long. Strange. And listen to this. That dog of mine likes everybody. But this afternoon, I thought he was going to go through the car window after that fellow Richards. 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 That's it. That's what Papers was trying to write. Don't you get it? No, I don't get it. What are you driving at? Papers wrote R-I-C-H in the sand, right? That's what it looked like. Well, that's the first four letters in Nick's last name. Richards. You could be right. But even if you are, what's Richards got to do with a horse trampling an old wino to death? Hello, Sheriff. Afternoon, Nell. How are you and that boy yours getting along? Not so well, I'm afraid. I think he's leaving town. David leaving town? Why do you say that? Well, he called Nick a little while ago and told him to drop by the apartment. He wants to opposition. Well, what for? Well, Nick didn't know exactly. Dad, I wish you could talk to David. I know if he leaves town, I'll never see him again. Well, David leaving town doesn't make sense. You're wrong there, Tom. It does make sense. If you'd seen the David I saw today, he's horribly disfigured in mind as well as face. Running away isn't going to solve anything. But you see, Sheriff, it's me he's running away from. He thinks I'm in love with Nick Richards. Nell, there's something I want you to do for me. It's important. I want you to tell Nick that you and David are leaving together. What? Just a hunch, but I think it'll work. What, what might work? I don't understand. You, you do as Tom says, honey. I'll see you two later.
What's this all about? Why are you worried about David? Because I think he's going to be the next victim. Victim? What do you mean? Well, I may be wrong, but I think Nick Richards is partly, if not completely, responsible for all the trouble that's been going on in Furnace Flats. Why him? He's been helping everybody. Well, I know it looks that way, but it's queer. Everything he touches seems to go wrong. Well, why don't we go have a talk with him? Kill two birds with one stone. Keep an eye on David at the same time. All right, we'll go in my car. I shoot him. Look, if you're all going crazy, why would I shoot Nick Richards? I was going to sell him the station if he wanted to buy it. Then what was the shooting? A rattlesnake. A rattlesnake? Rattlesnake in the house? Yeah, I must have crawled in through the window. I was looking for it when he came in. I think I hit it. There's some blood on the floor. You're right. You did hit it. Come on. I'll go get my flashlight. Evening, Ida. Mm -hmm. Evening, Sheriff. Now, David, Doc. Have you seen the snake? Sheriff, in all the years we have known each other, I have never been in the habit of seeing snakes. He means a rattlesnake, Ida. Mm. Can't say as I have. <laughs> Saw that cute Mr. Richards, though. Richards? Where, Ida? You don't have to shout, Sheriff. Look at the excitement. We think he might be in trouble. If you tell us, you might help him, Ida. Oh, I saw him just a few moments ago. He was coming out of the gas station. Looked like he was hurt or something. I don't know what's come over this town. It used to be a real nice place to live in. Now, Look, would somebody mind telling me what's going on around here? Well, I'm not sure myself yet, but I think I have an idea. As I said before, I'm not sure. Like Tom here, I'd just be guessing. Well, get to the point, Doc. From all indications, our young friend Nick Richards seems to have a tremendous power. Power to such an extent that he's capable of turning himself into anything he wants. You must be kidding, Doc. Dad, what are you saying? Well, I'm afraid that what the Doc says is true. Nick's to blame for everything that's happened around here. Yes, but what has the snake got to do with Richards? I don't understand. Well, here's Joe. Come on, let's get in the car. Now, wait a minute, Tom. Doc, can we get in the car? We're wasting time.
But all we can do is let him make peace with his maker. 